morning, everyone. Well, uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, it is my privilege, uh, it is my honor for me to stand before you and share uh, the word of God. Well, uh, actually, uh, this year, uh, my wife and I already made many trips. So we did not plan to be here. Uh, this uh, seminar was not in my plan. Uh, but uh, uh, Reverend Jung, uh, a man of persistence, uh, he kept calling me uh, persistently. Uh, he never stopped. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, last year he called me and uh, began to explain. explain. Uh, it, it was not explanation, it was praising, praising about BLTC and the strength of BLTC and you have to pick this one and then uh, at the time I said, uh, hey, Chung, <laughs> I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hungry. You, you contact with hungry man. Uh, because uh, uh, he said that 1999 is uh, uh, it's not important, but uh, 1995, uh, all of my family, uh, family members were sent uh, not, uh, to China in 1995, so uh, almost 30 years ago. And then there in China, we already made a full circle, a full piece, uh, pioneering through evangelism and parenting through discipleship, uh, partnering, uh, working together with them, and then participating the, uh, the ministry together. And then finally, uh, 2009, uh, 14 years ago, we uh, sent a Chinese missionary to Cambodia. Uh, that is one cycle as missionary. Uh, so, uh, honestly speaking, at the time, uh, I was not hungry. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, we missionary cannot say that. Uh, there is no uh, stop. Uh, there is no limitation. Uh, there is no end line. But, uh, 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 I think uh, uh, I felt I, I was being annoyed by him. <laughs> so even in the meeting, and then uh, someone called me and looked at uh, Jung Ji Hwan. <laughs> okay, I sent message, I, I'm in meeting now. And then recently he called me again. So, oh, okay, again, okay, uh, hi. And then he invited uh, to this meeting. And then uh, we didn't plan. Uh, but anyway, uh, my wife and I were convinced by him and then we purchased ticket and to be here. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not so sure uh, we have been convinced by this BLTC uh, up to now. Uh, but uh, this morning, uh, we received uh, two packs of uh, these uh, books. Uh, that means uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, we may uh, think uh, about this program, uh, impl uh, implanting to uh, Cambodia. Maybe uh, I have another big ethnic group uh, for this, maybe uh, if I have time, I can uh, mention a little bit more uh, after I share uh, the message. Um, actually, um, <clears throat> as I uh, joined to this, uh, uh, this conference, this seminar, and uh, some kind of uh, complicated uh, thought uh, unseedingly, unseedingly uh, come to me. Uh, do we have to think 
of leadership uh, as group or as individual. Uh, maybe uh, if we read the Bible, uh, individual uh, leadership uh, is biblical. Uh, especially, uh, uh, he just introduced uh, with two books, two books uh, maybe uh, 13, 14 years ago, I wrote one book, a ministry manual based upon 1st, 2nd Timothy and Titus. Uh, actually, that, that was a pastoral manual, uh, but uh, I changed the term from pastor to minister so minister is more broad, so uh, minister, um, minister's ministry manual. And then uh, uh, about two years ago, I finished it and published one book titled uh, Leadership Manual. Uh, that was written based on the book of Nehemiah. So uh, in my book, I wrote, I asked, leadership is born or made. Uh, leadership is given or brought up, trained. Uh, maybe uh, we know uh, these two men. Uh, uh, in the movie Amadeus, uh, which we are all familiar with, uh, two musicians I introduced uh, through this movie. And one is Mozart, a genius musician, talented, gifted. But uh, Salieri, also great musician. But he always felt inferior, infer, inferior uh, complex. Uh, comparing with uh, Mozart. So uh, even though he tried, tried, tried to catch up, but uh, uh, Mozart always play, 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 and drink. But uh, whenever he composed some music, much, much better. Uh, he was jealous of him. So uh, we call this uh, Salieri syndrome. So uh, just like this, uh, leader is leader born, given by God, or made through training. So a uh, group of leaders or individual leader who was called by God, who was born to that leadership, uh, we uh, need to think uh, about this. That's why uh, as I sat down and uh, kept listening to the lecture, various lectures, uh, which are very good, uh, but uh, to me, as far as I'm concerned, I kept thinking about this. Uh, Abraham, Moses, David, Apostle Paul, all great leaders, but all they were called by God, or they were assigned by God, or they were able to carry out uh, their missions that God entrusted to them. Uh, even though we can claim to be leader, uh, because we claim to be leader, are we leaders? Am I leader? Because simply because I stand before congregation and preach uh, with the word of God, I am a preacher, but am I a leader? Uh, we may need to think. So, uh, this is uh, uh, in my book, uh, 11 principles I found based on 13 chapters of the book of Nehemiah. Uh, in that book, 
constantly, continually focus on one leader, Nehemiah. So I took out uh, the principle, 11 principles. Uh, I wrote this book <laughs> in Korean and translated it into Chinese. And the first book was also was translated into Chinese, but not yet to English. I am now working on uh, to English. Uh, so uh, out of uh, 13 chapters of uh, the book of Nehemiah, I took out uh, 11 uh, principles. Uh, leaders should know uh, who he is or who she is. And uh, need to experience inner you know, healing, uh, need to maintain communication with God constantly, a life that interweaves uh, prayer and life as one and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and then uh, I found 10 uh, criteria uh, from this book uh, the, for the first uh, page of this book, uh, selecting teachers based on 10 criteria, face, history of faithfulness, and church reputation, making disciples willingness to teach, experience the ability to teach, familiarity with context, availability, commitment, 10. And then uh, the 11 principles I found from uh, the book of Nehemiah. I think uh, uh, each book of the Bible provides some kind of criteria about the leadership. So if we combine all together, uh, we cannot say which is good, which is uh, right, which is better. It's all from the Bible. So uh, maybe uh, we can combine together uh, in the special situation uh, that uh, uh, we have to engage in. So today, uh, this morning, uh, I want to share uh, two uh, principles with you uh, out of these 11 uh, principles. Uh, if uh, Jung Ki-hwan keep giving me the time, uh, I can finish all, but uh, my time is very limited, so just two uh, principles. The number one, Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, it says, when I heard these things, these things in verse 3, uh, the contents of verse 3, verse 3 says, uh, they said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. That was the news uh, Nehemiah heard uh, through his brother. And then when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days, for several days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. So here, uh, I picked one principle, uh, which is emotions of normal people and leaders. Everyone, uh, unexceptionally, everyone with an exception, experienced uh, some degree of broken-hearted, hurted, wounded experience uh, from the birth to up to now. Some sort of scar, trace of wounds remains, always remain deep inside of our emotion hidden memory. And these scars of bad experience unconsciously revealed. Uh, sometimes we can say ex exploded away with various forms in our lives, especially in our relationships with church member, or local leadership, or uh, with uh, the co-workers. Okay. 
sometimes violence, verbal violence, angry, depression, melancholy, serious uh, mental disorder. Uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, here, uh, it, it is very plain verse. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. Uh, for some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed. When I read this, I felt, wow, Nehemiah is healthy person in emotion. Uh, when he feel sad, he could express his sad feeling. He was able to weep, mourn, cry. Uh, it is very normal situation, but some people, some leaders couldn't do this, cannot do this. Everyone feels sad, and I have to be sad, but try not to express my sad feeling. They want to hide something. A uh, long time ago in China, one missionary, uh, his son uh, got car accident and died in China. And during the time of funeral, he did not show his crying, his weeping, his sorrowful feeling. He instead, he is now uh, in, in heaven. So praise the Lord, he keeps saying that. So one of friend uh, who is uh, doing pastoral ministry for Korean uh, church, and he told him, missionary Kim, cry. Now is time crying. You are supposed to cry. Why you uh, pretend to be happy? That is true. Your son is now in heaven. We need to be joyful. But now you need to cry. Why you are not crying? That's a um, uh, normal expression of our emotion. That can be obtained through inner healing. So when we are happy, we need to be happy. We need to express our happy feeling. Uh, when we are angry, and then maybe uh, we can uh, express some kind of uh, angry feeling, angry expression. Uh, when I was in the army, I was trained. Uh, uh, I was a, a, a military officer. It's the most of uh, Korean uh, guys, I can say, uh, Korean <laughs> males. Uh, yeah, they uh, have a military experience. Uh, one day, uh, I sat down with uh, CNMA, Christian and Mission Alliance uh, Director of uh, Cambodia, uh, David Manfred. I sat down with him and then uh, another Cambodian church leader. Uh, we sat together and took uh, dinner together. And then uh, at the time I, I mentioned, you guys know why Korean missionaries are so aggressive? They want to say that, but uh, they could not dare express that. So, but uh, I, for them, express, you guys know why Korean missionaries are so aggressive? They are very actively involved into ministry. As I mentioned about Jung Ki Hwan, and he kept calling, calling, calling persistently. Not only him, if anyone, any Korean missionary, uh, is assigned to do that, all they do that, because uh, most of them experience uh, army, du army duty for three years. Uh, Jesus was, was asked, uh, so one parents come and please help 
my son, if you can. And then Jesus, uh, how Jesus, Jesus replied, if you can, if you can, <laughs> nothing is impossible for Jesus. And then uh, in Korean army, if we say, I'm sorry, we cannot do it, uh, you cannot do, come, punish right away. Uh, so maybe uh, those who have worked with Korean missionary already know that it's a Korean missionary, they don't want to hear not possible. It doesn't work. And then uh, if you say it doesn't work, and then make it. If it doesn't work, make it. So uh, uh, maybe uh, many times it look like a very hot-tempered uh, characters of most of Korean missionaries. No, they passed through army training for three years. So I, I also applied to uh, ROTC, Reserved Officer Training Course. So when I went to a college and then uh, the junior year, senior year, I cut, I had my hair cut and then I joined to army and then uh, all kind of training. Uh, I still remember AT, animal training. You are, you are no longer human being from now on. You are animal and then they treat, treat me like animal train, you know. We pass through. So uh, all, uh, through the, uh, each corner of our life, and we experience some kind of bad things, broken-hearted experiences. And through all, all those uh, experiences, unconsciously, we accumulated some kind of anger, angry feeling, resentment. Many of those things should be healed, but without inner healing experience, few missionaries and few church pastors just uh, join to their divine ministry without inner healing experience. So they cannot express their real feeling. You know, even smile. Uh, this need to be trained. You know, the muscle to smile. Uh, if we do not smile frequently, and then uh, uh, this muscle uh, uh, does not fit to smile. So if we smile or laugh at too much, and then uh, we'll have some problem here, this muscle. So uh, we need to pass through some kind of inner healing uh, experience, maybe a leadership training. Among leadership training, we need to deal with uh, this emotional area. Without uh, this, apart from completion of inner healing, uh, joining to the ministry, Maybe a normal situation, no problem, but especially difficult and unacceptable situation. Uh, all those things uh, hidden inside of us may be all revealed away, revealed out. So we need to consider this. The second one. <clears throat> then I said, after he finished fastings, mourning. He did not stop there. And he said, Lord, he began to pray. Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Here, <clears throat> he knows to whom he pray, of course. Uh, when we pray, yeah, we know to whom we pray, but uh, we still need to clearly understand to whom we pray. The God of heaven, the great 
and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with uh, those who love him, with those who love him and keep his commandments. When I read this, wow. Uh, when Jesus taught us uh, the Lord's Prayer, Our Father in Heaven, that was the first. Our Father in Heaven. Yeah. So sometimes I pray for about 30 minutes only with this sentence. Father in Heaven, Lord, you are my Father. You are my Heavenly Father. You are my Creator. And who am I? I am mere creature created by you. And you are my Lord, Lord the God of Heaven. And then I am servant. You are Lord, I am servant. So he knows to whom he prayed. Clear understanding to whom he prayed. Uh, yeah, uh, all we already know, but I just remind with this. And then he kept going on. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father, father's family, have committed against you. You know, nowadays uh, in many churches and me, in many Christian organizations and mission organizations, if any leadership honestly accept their fault, their problem with coworkers or with in front of congregations, so many churches can be improved. But uh, many churches lose the opportunity of growing up because they do not accept own problem. But here, Nehemiah, the great leader, when he prayed, first of all, he called God to whom he prayed. And then secondly, he right away, he confessed his problem. I confess the sins, we Israelites, we Israelites, and then he did not forget, including himself, including myself, and my father's family. We have committed against you. We many times pass this one, and instead we condemn, we pointed other people, your problem because of you. Uh, uh, ready uh, to pass our problem uh, to others. <clears throat> one Chinese missionary, Korean missionary, one day he shared his experience with his daughter. Uh, one day his daughter uh, keep resisted him, rebel against him, and then one day he called her to him and then share the problem. And then she at the time honestly share everything. You are here only for Chinese. You never done anything good for me. And she kept explaining, crying, crying, crying. And Chinese guest came. You ask me to leave my room, give my room to them, and so on and so forth. And then after he heard everything, and then he told me, this is great point, he told me, I knelt down before my daughter and asked, forgive me. Wow, when I heard that, wow, what kind of guy it is. I admire him ever since that time. He could kneel down before daughter when he accepted his problem. He did not know that. We need to accept our problem like Nehemiah. <clears throat> Verse 
recognition and acceptance of own sin. And then, finally, and then he began to request his uh, desire. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. So, give your servant success today. So he was about to go to king and ask detailed assistance for the Israel, for the Jerusalem. So first, he clearly demonstrates to whom he pray, and then the second, confession of sins, and third, detail, detail request. And then he did not finish there. <clears throat> and then uh, King said, why, why you look so sorrow, so sad? Uh, before King, at the time, King has all authority and power to kill anyone. Uh, it was not democratic. Uh, situation. But I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? King now is asking, what do you want? What can I do for you? It was a wonderful moment of God's answer. But right there, he prayed. Right before the king, then I prayed to the God of heaven. He could answer right away, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 we need your help. We need your support. But at that very moment, he prayed to the God of heaven. I took this. As great point, actually. Even in this point, he was able to communicate with God just for a moment, even though it is for a moment. It, it is the man of prayer. We can say that. So here, then. A moment uh, in, in front of king who has the power to kill and save his life. Well, up to this, uh, I want to share. Uh, I briefly introduce one group of uh, a big ethnic group, uh, all you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, because uh, I uh, was a missionary for Chinese, and I am still missionary for Chinese. Uh, China was the, uh, my, our first love in our mission. Uh, my wife, uh, early 30, and I was uh, mid 30. Uh, all my young ages, for almost 20 years, we spent there. Uh, when we went to China, two years, four years, six years old child, children, uh, we went there together. Uh, we lived there, spent our lives there, so we couldn't forget. And then uh, they are still uh, the people we have to pray and we have to concern. Uh, but uh, especially uh, when I thought of uh, the BLTC, like uh, this kind of a leadership program, uh, I, I like to challenge here leadership's uh, potential of the Chinese church. Let me briefly explain official statistics. Government, three self church, 
2019, they said in China, they have around 50 million Christians, church members. But house church was not counted. So international mission organization, they see almost 10%. Now 10% is uh, 130 million, but a little bit less, 100 million. But I see, OK, meet the halfway, maybe 70 million. Someone asked, uh, how many percent of born again Christian among them? Maybe uh, we can uh, figure, maybe uh, we can uh, just uh, uh, down, down uh, the ratio, maybe a uh, 20% of 70 million claimed Christians, still 14 million. 14 million born again Christian. If we count only 20% out of 70 million claim Christians. Okay, and then to, uh, dedicated, committed Christian under persecution. Uh, I mean dedicated Christians, uh, they are willing to die for Christian faith. They come and persecute us, okay, we'll accept, we'll take it. Minimum, still 20% out of 14 million born-again Christians. I can tell, I experience. When we count this number, around 3 million dedicated, committed Christians. Because uh, they already passed through cultural revolution. During that time, many Christians were imprisoned and, you know, died. They experienced it. So now Xi Jinping, he uh, want to remove all Christianity out of China, but he knows he cannot, and then all police bureau know he, they cannot, because they already experienced. Even though we put all Christians into jail, and they won't be changed. We cannot change them, they know. So 20% out of 14 million born again Christ Christians Really, really dedicated Christian, committed Christians, 2.8 million. And then 20% out of 14 million born again Christian, 2.8, can function leaders in the church. At least 10% from this figure will be in mission field and will, can serve as missionaries in the field. Uh, they are leaders in mission field. They are leaders in Chinese church. Around 300,000 people are dedicated Christian workers who are not afraid of any kind of persecution. And then can we ignore these groups. Jung Moksanyan, can you ignore this group? So we need to empower Chinese Christian leaders uh, throughout worldwide. You know, for instance, uh, in, in, in Cambodia, already around 100 Chinese full-time missionaries are working on. And then including me, the three uh, missionary groups already began Mission China Forum 10 years ago. And we already finished 10 times of forum. We invited all Chinese missionaries and then uh, the churches uh, which experienced sending missionaries and then training and sending managing organization leaders, we invite them, and then we 
be 10 times of forum. It is our work of mobilization and promotion uh, for uh, Mission China through Chinese church. So we also need to join empowering Chinese Christian leaders. You know what, what is this? This is also BLTC, uh, BLTC sand club sandwich. Bacon, Lidus, Tomero Club, BLTC. Yeah, so if you go to a website and type BLTC and then the first image of BLTC is a BLTC sandwich. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not talking about this BLTC. Leadership International. Uh, BLTC Biblical Leadership Training Center empower Chinese Christian leaders to become effective, powerful leadership. I know what to do, and then I, I'm now challenging because uh, I cannot see any Chinese leader here. Uh, even though it is, uh, it is held in, in Asia, the most important one of important ethnic groups. So please consider my challenge. And then uh, if you want to discuss, maybe uh, uh, Asian director of Lausanne Committee is uh, David Rowe. Uh, he has been a, a mission, missionary in China for a long, long time. And He's speaking uh, Chinese well. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, we can uh, cooperate together for this. They are thirsty to learn something. So yesterday, I was informed of uh, formal, informal education. Yeah, it was really good session for me. And then we can combinedly use both and then we can challenge Chinese leadership and Chinese missionaries to collaborate together for their world mission okay thank you